David Joyce is now the congressman representing Warren, Ohio, and he is the chair of the Subcommittee on Appropriations for Interior and the Environment, which means he can do things for Warren and Lake Erie. He's also really one of the nicest guys in the House of Representatives. Congressman Joyce, welcome to the Hugh Hewitt Show. Great to have you on. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be on, Hugh. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, Congressman, where did you go to high school? Because I just want to make sure you didn't go to St. John's. No, I went to West Yorga. Okay, West Geauga. And you didn't go to Ashtabula High School where my mom and dad went. You're not a harbor guy. So West Geauga is fine. And then you went down to Dayton. You're a flyer, and you're a flyer out of law school. When did you decide to go into politics? Well, when I first came home, I started working for the uh, Republican Party in Geauga County, figuring well, I could use it to help meet some people and get some clients. And uh, after working on a couple campaigns, I, I, there was a guy who was a prosecutor who was ran for muni court judge and won. And there was a, a process in which they were going to appoint somebody. And I looked around the room and I saw none of these people had ever been to an event before. I mean, well, I'm going to throw my name in. The next thing I know, I got appointed prosecuting attorney. And I enjoyed that job for 25 years. And then from there, you ran for Congress. Did you ever dine at Lou's Steakhouse over at uh, Saybrook? No, I haven't. But thank oh, my you goodness. Too. You got to get the Billo Beach, Congressman. Anyway, uh, you managed to get on appropriations. How did that happen? Was it a John Boehner helping out a fellow Buckeye early on in your career a decade ago? Yes, it was, exactly. I mean, John always made sure that people, uh, all the Buckeyes were on committees of jurisdiction. I surveyed the field and saw that uh, my uh, predecessor, Steve LaTourette, and uh, Steve Austria, who lost in a primary to Mike Turner, uh, were on appropriations and weren't coming back. And I said, you know, I thought I could do a good job there. He told me I'll never get it, but then he actually helped, was helpful in pushing for it. Well, that is great uh, because ten years. Warren had uh, the undoubtedly memorable Jim Traficant, who was worthless as a congressman, and they had the no one remembers Charles Carney, who was a very good appropriator. You can either have a workhorse or a show horse. You're a workhorse. How do you like being chairman of a subcommittee that decides the Interior Department and the EPA and other... Don't you also have NEH and NEA? Uh, well, you know, I got bumped up this term, and I'm, I'm now the uh, chair of Homeland Security. Oh, my goodness! Yes, and so I also got on defense, which is interesting. So oh, you're on with Ken Calvert great. on defense? I'm learning a lot from Ken. I went to his office the other day to apologize because our homeland and defense bills are on a collision course, so I'm hardly making any of the hearings. But uh, I just went with him to the Far East on a CODEL, and I can tell you one thing, Hugh. I, I listen to you, but I still got a lot to learn about defense. Well, Chairman, Chairman Calvert knows what he's doing, and he won't say it. But they got to start looking at transitioning away from the carriers. Talk to me about Homeland Security then. That means that Mayorkas was there recently, right? Is he in there for the budget request? He's in this morning, as a matter of fact. Very timely. Uh, yesterday we had the uh, chair, director from CISA and also from TSA, and then today he's coming in. Are you going to talk to him about the fence, the wall, the border bo uh, barriers that are absolutely necessary to send a signal? It's the outward manifestation of an inward resolve to control the border. Yes, and the fact that we let all these contracts, and we're paying the contractors to do nothing, and letting the steel rot there on the ground just makes no sense. And the idea that we're going around talking about the border being secure is something that I think he needs to explain. As I've explained to the other members on the committee, though, what you've got to say is, you know, you ask money for X, you have produced Y, uh, you know, tell us what the discrepancy is, why, why you're not solving these problems, why aren't you doing the things that are necessary to secure our border? That is a great line. We'll be listening for that exchange yesterday. You know, it was my bane to be in the Reagan administration when the appropriators had Steny Hoyer, and he would write fine line into the print for the OPM appropriations. Do you guys do appropriation writers anymore that say we're defunding this position or we're, we're refusing to fund any effort to write these regulations? Do you do that anymore? Absolutely. That's uh, what we had been doing until the earmarks finally came back. The idea was that you could say you couldn't say how they were going to spend money, but you could say how they could not spend money. And so that reverse earmark was, I think, very important as far as limiting a lot of the regulation, and, and especially the bad regulation that all these people try to write into their agencies. This afternoon, I'm also on financial services, and I got Gary Gensler. In Wait, there, how can you writing. be on appropriations and financial services? Well, financial services, general governance. It's a subcommittee of appropes. Okay, okay. So I thought maybe you were talking about uh, Patrick McHenry's committee, because that you can't be on one of the big three, two of the big three, right? Correct. And so uh, Patrick does a wonderful job there, but I'm on the uh, one that we put in the things that if they're pushing regulation like Gensler's pushing, we put in no money will be applied to, 
and 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 put out the whatever re- rule or regulation he's trying to enforce. Now that you are in a position, your lobbyist line. I'm not a lobbyist. I've never been a lobbyist. I went up and yelled at Congressman about the Endangered Species Act, <laughs> but I never been a lobbyist. What is it like to be on a probes right now? They they must be lined up in the hall since earmarks are back. Well, you know the the good part is uh, they have to be. Uh, uh, there's no longer any outside earmarks. It has to be a public agencies, and it has to be vetted through a committee. And so they have to put them all out for uh, ahead of time, and then uh, you're allowed to put in 15 of them. And so I tell people who are coming to me for things for a homeland or, or when I was interior, say, give me your top three, and, and make sure if we're going for number one, if we get it, you're done with two and three, or you know, if we get two, you know, try to prioritize them so we're not just going through them and, and filling them out, and try to help the areas where, you know, I, I think it's our duty to, to spend the money the way the Congress, the representative sees fit versus just giving it in bunches to the administration and some bureaucrat who has no idea what Warren, Ohio looks like, making determinations on how the money should be spent. You know, I've now come to, I think we're at the happy medium on earmarks, what you just Correct. described. Let me bring up one. I'll lobby you. Uh, I know Ravenna wants the missile defense program they've wanted it for years the chamber from northeastern ohio and the valley goes in and looks for it has that ever come across your screen on defense appropriations yet oh yes we, we were fighting hard for that and uh, michigan was trying to get it and, and a couple others uh but we you know i, I we we didn't get it this time but we're still you know fighting for ravenna and also for the youngstown air force base that uh, is also the considered the airport down in that area well, I, all you have to do is write, no other appropriations shall be spent in Ohio except in northeastern Ohio. That's a pretty good one, right? That, and now, can we do something about the border between Pennsylvania and Ohio? Can we get the TSA to do that? We can shut down the Steelers fans sneaking over. So, honestly, well, you're part of the Main Street. in your hometown. I know. My nephew is a Steelers fan. I, we, my brother failed. Let's talk a little bit about whether or not this Congress is going to get anything done. I just had Olivia Beavers on. She's a fine reporter from Politico. Great. Says report. there are tensions within the caucus. Expand on that, Congressman Joyce. Are there? You know, uh, it's a growing pain. But the one thing that in the decade I've been here, we're finally starting to see, uh, although the, you know, the craziness that took place the third through the sixth till Kevin was finally appointed, this is the first time we've had all the different factions at one table discussing how we're going to move the ball forward and get to 218. And, and that's a very important aspect of this that has been lost over the in the past. In working together, uh, instead of having things come from the Speaker's office directly to the floor, working on doing our job in committees, doing our job as a whole to try to process the bills like and get to an agreement on what it's going to take to, to get the debt ceiling done and other things. And that, I think Kevin's made some tremendous progress there. But, you know, there are some growing pains in that. Uh, obviously, there are going to be growing pains in that. I just want the Main Street caucus of which you are a member and i think i'd probably be a member of it too if i were a member of congress uh to get along with the freedom caucus and then can't you do between the various caucuses what you just discussed among the various uh demands for appropriation give me your top three can't we satisfy every caucus in the republican conference and and that's what we're trying to get to actually and then an amazing part of this is uh, the other day they were talking and we were trying to talk through the budget process and they're the what Kevin calls the five families, and I happen to be the uh, chair of the Republican governance group. So I have a seat at the table, and as they got through with it all, I said, look, you guys, I I appreciate what you're saying, but when you do a 10-year budget and you talk about the cuts that are going to be made, all the 10 members that Lee Zeldin brought to the table are all going to be out next time. They're all Biden districts that we won. You know, let's talk about this year. Let's talk about what it takes to get to 218 and keep the 218 assembled. And about two minutes later, Scott Perry goes, you know, I agree with Dave Joyce, the head of the Freedom Caucus. We got to make sure that we're making sure that our policy is consistent to bring everybody on board and get everybody through the next election, too, without uh, messing with our own people. Now, they're going to redistrict Ohio, Congressman, uh, because the Ohio Supreme Court flipped and the maps that the legislature draw are going in. I hope you're going to keep Warren because we haven't had an appropriator in a million years with seniority. Is that going to happen? You're going to keep Warren, whatever happens? I sure hope so. You know, I I, uh, had lunch recently with Tim uh, Ryan, who had been an appropriator. Dear friend of mine, Kennedy High School graduate. Yep. Yeah, and I sat down with him to make sure I wasn't dropping the ball down there. But great things are happening in Warren. Next time you come down in June for your golf outing or whenever you get down this summer, uh, you know, it could bring you up to speed on some of the things that are happening. But uh, part of my Far East visit, uh, I met with the president of Taiwan, and Foxconn is taking over Lordstown and doing some great What? There. Yeah. Oh, that is terrific. Are they going to make chips there? 
No, what they're going to do is they've got the electric truck that they started, and they've got the battery factory, and right across the street, LG has a battery factory going on, and we're trying to rename the Mahoning Valley the E-Valley, and uh, Youngstown State, there's a lot of buy-in on this and, and a lot of public support, but the president of Taiwan committed to this. I said, I know Foxconn had some stops and starts in Wisconsin, but you're asking for concessions in Ohio, and people aren't really uh, amenable to doing that until they know you're going to put in the investment. She said, oh, you know, we want this. We've encouraged them to invest there. Yeah, GM took the money and ran uh, yeah. from Lordstown. I've never, I'm never going to forgive them for that. They took the money and ran. So, Congressman, when you look at, at your three counties, I think you have Jaga, Ashtabula, eh, four, Jaga, Ashtabula, Mahoning, and Trumbull, is that right? And Portage, five. Oh, yeah, Portage. Um, what is the number one priority for the, the – we cover the land. We're in Youngstown. We're in Cleveland. We're in Columbus. We cover the land. What's the most important thing? Jobs. You know, making sure that we have the jobs and they're, they're well, good-paying good and, and going to be there for a while. Now, in Ashtabula, does the port have a future – you know, I've been working for that. I, I, I've said that that is one of the best kept secrets we have in, in the north coast of America because they have the deep water ports. They just uh, hadn't been used. And I've been fighting for years to get the liquefied natural gas up there. Uh, granted, it's only a six month a year, uh, it's available, but we could still direct ship to Hungary. And, you know, there is a plan on the table to build or repair submarines in the Great Lakes again. Uh, I think it's further, I think it's not in. in Ashtabula, but further up the north coast. Has that crossed your radar yet? No, it hasn't, but thanks for the heads up on that. I'll look for it. Okay, keep coming back. I'm so glad Warren, you know, this is a homer. It's a complete hometown. Now, he is chairman of Homeland Security Appropriations Subcommittee, so it matters. But Congressman Dave Joyce, we love having you on. Keep coming back. Great representative for, you know, that's my hometown thing. Now,